so we are going to start the next session this section is on how you can use map technology tools with the learning objectives and the with the purpose uh, basically the sec session is uh, titled digital blooms taxonomy the session objectives are at the end of the session participants will be able to identify a list identify or list digital tools that are useful for students inside and outside class apply a digital taxonomy to map learning outcomes to use prescribed digital tools so consider this scenario there is this classroom a where the teacher uses a stand and deliver or an instructional type of uh, strategies and where the learning style is basically auditory or read and write that means students listen to what the teacher is saying and then copy notes uh, or basically the student involvement is passive that means they are told about the content or the processes that are involved in the lecture and technology use is very minimal to the level that it is either learning about the technology if it is a technology course or is it is augmentative that means you use you use a technology to teach with that means you can use a powerpoint or projectors so it is limited to that now consider classroom b where the teaching style of the instructor is project and problem based which comes under the constructionist uh, strategies and the students have multiple learning styles uh, and they display multiple intelligence that means they are very much involved they create contents develop and evaluate the processes and the technology is used in a transformative way for example they may upload multimedia files they might uh, go and uh, do experiments hands on use hardware if it is an electronic uh, related subject so things like that so there are these two classrooms in place classroom a the traditional and classroom b a bit uh, modern so according to you which classroom will be more useful for student learning classroom a or classroom b or it may be that you will have an idea that both are equally good so participants please vote your option uh, so rcc you can convey the option through a view poll so option number 1 is that classroom a will be more useful option number 2 classroom b will be more useful or option number 3 both are equally good so i have seen the chat so there is a there is a vast majority who say 2 and there are some who say it is 3 both are equally good which is good which is good for the next activity ok the responses are coming I see lot of 2's a 3 is coming in between ok so the opinion is more or less divided between 2 and 3 so which means that we need to have a debate so my instruction to RCC is make two groups A and B within your remote center group A participant have to list uh, will be voting for classroom A so they will have to list points which say that classroom A is better group B participants have to list points which say classroom B is better so you have 5 minutes to do this entire activity so uh, RCC you are requested to group the participants so make two groups group A and group B so I am able to view some of the videos 
of the remote centers yes uh, so i see a instructor a remote center coordinator grouping these people and explaining the instructions so group a you will have to list points which say classroom a is better and group b will have to list points why classroom b is better so classroom b is your new classroom wherein the style is entirely changed and there is more use of technology and classroom a is your traditional classroom so you just need to identify two points so i am seeing responses coming in from the remote centers coordinator you just have to convey just two main points for both classroom a and classroom b i've got a response which says that classroom a is better for uh, mathematical concepts which need just derivation where you write you write derivations and the students also follow it along with you and uh, the second point was on simple theoretical concepts which needs direct instruction delivery from the instructor okay uh, any points on classroom b so uh, from another remote center i have uh, so students are more involved so there are points for class a where they say that students interact and involve more in classroom a class b gives a feel of learning with the use of animation and videos uh, an interesting one classroom a economical so there is a large opinion that problematic concepts subjects can be easily taught or subjects which involve problems or mathematical formulas can be easily taught in classroom a classroom b is needed for interactive learning so what we'll do now is we'll just so more or less most of the people are saying uh, the same thing so i'll just summarize some of the limitations of classroom a even though the points that you have mentioned were uh, are quite right so limitation of classroom a is that at the end of the day it is teacher centric means that you have you don't focus on the learner too much and there is too much of content orientedness content orientedness of this class and the instruction is assessment focused and predominantly targeting lower order thinking skills in the classroom so what we have or what we have in regular universities we say that there is a time tabled learning plus homework which will constitute the entire learning experience for a learner but in a classroom b since the strategies involve problem solving or are project based or use active strategies we see that the entire instruction is student centric so the learning focus is more on the process and embedded content so the content is embedded along with the process which means that students will be able to reach higher order thinking skills within the classroom activity and learning is anywhere any time activity unless uh, unlike a time table so 9 to 10 you study uh, computer science 10 to 11 you study mechanics so unlike that you have a anywhere any time learning which will benefit the learner a lot more so what we want is a switch from classroom a to classroom b that means from a traditional to the 21st century classroom because uh, you are at the end in a 21st century where students are more native to the use of technology which means that as a teacher you need to switch from a 21st uh, your traditional teaching style to a 21st century teaching so that students use digital tools and are able to reach higher order thinking skills within the classroom so what characterizes a 21st century learner or why we need to shift to 
a 21st century learning. There are multiple multimedia resources available right now. Students do parallel processing and multitasking. They are more keen on the picture or the multimedia that means pictures, videos and sound more than text and all of them are networked with many others making them comfortable equally in virtual and real spaces. And for them, for a 21st century learner, learning is relevant as in they, they need to know what they are supposed to do, it needs to be instantly useful and it has to be fun. So, it leads us to the idea of digital learning tools or technologies that support 21st century learning. So, these technologies support both the processes and actions with the technologies and it will contain cognitive elements as well as methods and tooling. So, what we mean by this is that the activities that we design with digital learning tools will have inherent cognitive levels that you saw earlier in the Bloom's taxonomy while uh, doing the learning objectives and what it does is it facilitates creation, communication and collaboration both within and outside the classroom. So, recall you had used Bloom's taxonomy uh, earlier from lower order recall or remember to the higher order creating level. So, for technology tools we do have a taxonomy based on the purpose in which the tool is used. This taxonomy is called the digital blooms taxonomy and it has the exact same levels remembering to creating. So, we will now see what constitutes the remembering to creating, how this classification has emerged. So, you see it is on the learning activity. So, if you are not able to see the uh, text, please do not worry because this is going to be detailed in the coming slides. So, every technology has a purpose and it has to be used with on a specific activity and this learning activity decides the level in which the technology is being used. So, there is a question why digital, digital because we are using the ICT tools which are digital tools at the end of the day. So, we now look at one individual uh, level. So, a simple example, we will go through examples and uh, of activities and also the tools, various tools which are used at individual level. So, let us see this slide. What you see over here is an image. So, the specific technology tool that we use is a labeled image and it is used for listing or identifying parts and this comes in the remembering level. So, the picture is that of a labeled cycle. So, you see a cycle and all the parts have been labeled in it and what this facilitates is to see the different parts or identify the different parts of the particular cycle. So, there is a small activity, it will not take more than 30 seconds. On the left hand side, I have some technologies which are listed and on the right hand side, I have some specific learning activities for which the technology can be used. So, within the RCC, each of you have to match the learning, uh, the technology with the learning activity. So, you have 30 seconds to do this activity. Okay, I see many remote centers have come up with the right answer. 
So, it is PowerPoint is used for bullet pointing, OneNote is used for note taking, Delicious is a bookmarking uh, software or a tool, Google is used for searching. So, you saw how the tool and how the purpose are being matched over here. So, these are a list of tools and their purposes at a remembering level. So, for bullet pointing you can use PowerPoint, mind map, flashcards, there can be highlighting for which you can use the word processor that means MS word. For searching you can use the Google, Bing, Yahoo, meta search. For note taking you can use Google keep, OneNote, simple note. So, there are and this list is not exhaustive. So, you can add different more examples, but ultimately it, it the level will be only simple remembering where they just list identify or do low level the lowest level cognitive task. So, remember the videos that we were showing you across entire workshop. This video was used to explain content and this purpose comes under the understanding level within the digital blooms taxonomy. That means, when you show content using video, when you explain content using video, the video tool is used in the understanding level. So, within understanding you will have, so you have some more purposes or the learning activities which are uh, here. You can have advanced searches where you search for uh, uh, particular expressions like boolean searches or blogging, commenting as using twitter or forums, annotating using uh, Mendeley or Adobe reader or subscribing to RSS feeds or aggregators. So, all these tasks come under the understanding level within the digital blooms taxonomy. So, let us have one more small activity, this is called brain race. You saw examples of technology tool and learning activity at understanding level. Given below are learning activities at understanding level that is summarizing, classifying and comparing. You have to think of tools that you know will facilitate the understanding level within the digital blooms taxonomy. So, you have 30 seconds, at the end of 30 seconds you share this with your RCC and RCC will have to share two tools for each purposes from your center. So, you have to specify tools which can be used for summarizing, classifying or comparing. So, a lot of you have shared that for a PPT can be used for summarizing or uh, MS Word. For comparing you can use Excel, Origin or even Word, flow charts and bar charts for summarizing which is good. It is a visual summary of the information. So, tree diagrams, graphs, digital images which is good. So, you have an understanding about the understanding level. Now, let us move to the third phase uh, which is the applying level. So, this image is known to all of you. So, this is MS Excel, the technology tool of MS Excel which is used for calculation and representation. So, for example, if the teacher gives an MS Excel with pre written formulas and macros in it and student just have to enter data into it and the Excel sheet gives you representations, calculations and representation, then the teacher as a teacher you are using MS Excel in the level of applying. So, if you remember 
at the applying level you just implement carry out or execute processes using the technology so in this pro in this particular example we had students just enter the data into the excel and the excel itself showed the representation and did the calculations for the students hence we say that the learning activity of using excel in this particular case is at applying level so let's look at some more applying level operations there is running loading and operating which means if they are you are installing programs or operating systems they are there is playing as in games the visualizations or games like second life hacking as in ethical hacking using armitage or tools like that uploading and sharing wherein uh, you use a google drive or a dropbox or one drive or even editing using google docs or ms word or photoshop wherein you know what exactly you have to enter so the learning activities which use these kind of operations or these kind of learning activities are said to be at applying level so we now move to a small activity it will take 3 minutes it is the think pair activity so first you have to think individually about a technology tool that you can use in the in your own course at applying level share this with a peer to so share both the tool and the learning activity to get feedback about it so rccs can share one or two such uh, tool and purposes within using the avu chat so take time to think individually about the technology tool and also most importantly the learning activity because that defines whether it is at applying level or or any uh, different one so things like smart class are too broad so you will have to specify what exactly you are doing within smart class if you want to categorize it at apply level okay clicker this is a good example as in they use the students use clicker in classrooms for peer instruction so what the remote center has not specified is the learning activity so what you have to, so clickers when used for peer instruction just for entering the choice it is the use of technology or apply application of the technology and hence it is it is at the digital blooms apply level so i see a lot of technologies being entered but what we want is technology and the learning activity again stress the point of learning activity because that is what classifies whether the technology is used at the right level so let me take this particular example simulation software for programming again uh, simulations can be used at higher levels so if if it is an already known program or you are uh, using it for a debugging purpose or uh, for teaching the classroom then that simulation software will be at apply level okay there is this example geogebra for drawing graphs using equations so you enter the equations the equations are already given to the students and geogebra is just a representation for the equations in that sense it is at apply level okay there is one more example where they say it is use of flash tools to execute algorithms so this is at apply level so there is an already existing algorithm and you use the tool to just execute that particular algorithm which is right latex to prepare various docs uh, may may be at apply level but what is important is are you creating latex right from the start so are you using existing templates or are you creating templates on your own so basically the summary is that you will have to specify the learning activity 
to qualify to see whether your uh, tool use qualify under the apply level within the digital blooms taxonomy. So, you already saw some examples. Now, we move to the analyzing level. So, this what you see over here is a fed simulation game wherein students are given a problem you have to uh, create a total area of 18 and you have these particular tiles to use to create that particular uh, to build your uh, area. So, what is important over here is the fed simulation game is used for both finding and integrating. Finding the correct uh, the smallest block which can fit in and also integrating that entire uh, into that particular square. So, that it becomes 18. So, it goes beyond mere application of the tool which is this simulation to more a more higher cognitive level which which is quite similar to the analyzing level within the Bloom's taxonomy. And since it is a game, it is also an interesting exercise for the students as it motivates them to complete the task. So, some of the common tools and their uh, methods at analyze level are sh shown here. So, mashing can be done through Google Maps or Google Earth, surveying through Google Forms or SurveyMonkey, linking databases. So, for linking databases, spreadsheets, CMAP which you saw uh, today morning, which is a concept map tool for, uh, I mean CMAP is a tool for concept mapping. For tagging you have Evernotes and tables. For reverse engineering you have Boomerang or uh, only DBG. So, these are some tools and the purposes for which these technology tools are used to fit at analyzing level. So, now we will do a think pair share activity. First, think individually about a technology tool that you can use in the course at analyzing level within the digital blooms taxonomy. You can take one minute. So, this now you are trying to fit in your course, you are trying to fit the tool in your course at analyze level. So, you do not need to share it through chat, you have to think on your own. So, now we move to the pair phase where each of you have to pair with a neighbor who is in a similar domain or a similar topic of yours and share your choice of tool and description about the learning activity that you want to do with that tool. So, in the pair phase share the tool that you are going to use and description about the learning activity you do not need to share it at this moment, share phase will explicitly come. So, now we move to the share phase where RCC you can uh, uh, take two answers from your remote center and share it through the A view chat. So, the answer should contain the technology tool and the learning activity at analyze level. Okay, so, I will share some of the interesting answers that came up uh, to know the pollution using satellite imagery, which is a good I mean it may go even, but it is a good task you are using a tool of satellite images and you are analyzing pollution based on some already existing uh, I mean uh, pattern for the pollution uh, different types of pollutions. Okay, there is another surveying using LMS. So, you uh, surveying using LMS at the most uh, usual surveys is actually 
is at an apply level because you just execute the survey. But if it is like creation of the questions that you need to insert in the survey, then it is at an analyze level. Google Maps for site analysis, good example. Fluent fluid flow analysis, so I am I am hoping that, so the basic idea within analysis is that it should go beyond mere use of the tool. There should be some specific activity wherein it goes beyond general execution or implementation. So, we now move to the evaluating phase. So, you see this technology is your MS word and the specific activity is reviewing. So, for example, as a teacher, if you have to review an assignment report of your student, you can use this particular functionality of MS Word, wherein you give your comments using track changes. So, some other purposes or learning activities which are at evaluating level are commenting and posting, moderating, networking, refactoring and testing and these are some of the tools which can be used for this purpose. So, at an evaluate level what it means is that tool provides them with facility to decide on something and think about something and give a judgment about the activity. So, now we move directly to the creating level and this is a screenshot of a wiki. This is the ET repository wiki which we will be using within this workshop. The remote center coordinators have already been given logins to this wiki. So, one specific activity for which wiki can be used at create level is portfolio creation. Now, portfolio creation can be both done by the teacher and the student where they display what is essential about themselves using wiki features. You can link to activities, you can upload multimedia files and link them in a single wiki page to show the portfolio of yourself. So, you either as a teacher and if you want to see specific activities done by students within a course, you can create individual course portfolios for the students. And this particular activity, learning activity of portfolio creation is at create level where students have to do much more than judgment or much more than analysis, but they have to present something on their own. So, some of the tools which are used for creating are either programming tools, technology tools which assist in filming and animating which is used for blogging and wikis, for publishing, video cast or podcast or even screen cast for that matter and some modeling tools. So, what we will do right now is summarize this session. So, some of the recommendations that you can see that came up across the discussion is that you always have to tie the use of the tool to specific learning content and outcome. That means the purpose for you to see at what level or for you to use it within your course. First give students an opportunity to gain exposure to the tool before any assignment with the tool. Provide help manuals and tutorials on using the tool if the tool is new. Provide mechanisms for students to get feedback from peers, teaching assistants and lecturer. So, in normal university uh, college I mean, and university system, there may not be a concept of teaching assistants, but teaching assistants are people who help the professors in carrying out instruction. So, basically for normal colleges, you should ensure that the tool, you get feedback about the use of tool from your peers and also from the lecturer if you are giving it to a student. So, in summary, we see that digital tools are useful for students to use in both inside and outside of class 
to create, communicate and collaborate. Now Bloom's revised digital taxonomy, it just allows us to map the learning outcomes to the use of digital tools. So you already have learning outcomes or learning objectives that you have already created and you have a technology tool for which you create the, you identify the purpose. Now Bloom's taxonomy, the digital taxonomy allows us to map these two. So that comes to the end of this session.